Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, before we start the video, I just want to tell everybody that the Thrustmaster DCS Hornet Challenge, the vote is up and running. Um, so if you haven't voted already, please go and vote. Big thank you to everybody who has already voted. Uh, it's definitely a close race, so um, if you haven't voted, definitely head over there and vote. I will put the link in the comment section and the video section below. Okay, let's get started with the video, guys. All right, so yeah, we uh, have got this AMRAM buff that came up today, a uh, new update by ED. They said they increased the range of the AMRAMs by 10 to 20%. So uh, we got another F-15 out there today. We're gonna fight them and uh, see how the AMRAM performs next to the SD-10 here today. Uh, definitely interested to see what they did with it. I said in the last video that I think the AMRAM deserved a buff. I didn't wanna see the SD-10 get a nerf um, that's the way I think it should have been balanced and I think ED has made the right decision with buffing the AMRAM here so we'll see what we can do against it here today I'm a little bit nervous not gonna lie it's a new missile I'm not sure of its parameters and stuff so there's a high chance I could get killed so I'll have to defend very aggressively here today Should be picking them up on radar. Oh, there he is. Oh, no, never mind. I thought I saw him there for a second. So we'll go ahead and IFF him here. We picked him up on radar. And he came back as hostile. So we'll go ahead and lock him up. And upon locking him up, you'll see on the HUD there, he's already in range. And we're about 40 nautical miles in the 40s, which is significant for an SD-10. So uh, I'd like to see the AMRAM matching that or just slightly beating it, because technically the Charlie is supposed to be a further range than the SD-10. We're gonna continue climbing here, and just before we fire the missile, we'll pitch up 15 degrees right here and Fox 3 away at him. That'll loft the missile, so we'll get better range out of it. Here we go. And so you saw that missile kind of loft itself, just the second it just broke off and started climbing. So that missile is now climbing through 50,000 feet and higher. So a very thin air, um, increasing the probability of kill of that missile. I guarantee you that he has fired an AIM-120 at us in TWS, which means I will not receive the notification until it goes pitbull. And so I need to pre-defend. I need to make sure that I'm defending that incoming missile, pretending that it's coming in, even though I can't hear it right now. Yep, missile. there it is. Missile. So we brought the nose up there and gave him another missile. 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 Just a second thing for him to worry about at a lower altitude. Because he's probably going to defeat that first one if he just dives down really aggressively. Missile. We got an incoming AMRAM here. It's making me a little nervous. Because it won't go away. Okay, I think we beat it. It's behind me. We're good, we're good. It can't catch up at this point. And so what I'm going to do here is recommit and hope that I can pick him up. And as we come around, I'm, there he is. I got him on radar there. I lost him. There he is. Lock him up. And we'll give him a Fox 3 right here. Missile. 
and we're going to pull hard and defend any incoming amrams that he may have fired we are well within the abort range so defend very aggressively you always want to keep your speed high in these bvr fights speed is life if you're slow you're gonna die and so we're gonna climb and hope that maybe his amram doesn't follow us up here he was pretty low altitude so his amram shouldn't be that strong and I think we beat it. Yep, there it goes. And so I can see him off in front of me, a little glistening light here. I'm putting the bore side of the missile right on him. There he is, there he is, there he is. I didn't get a PL5 solution on him though. There was no tone. So we're going to dive down so he has to look down into the dirt to find us. He's climbing, which makes him an easy target. He's up against the blue sky. And as we swing around, I'm hoping he stays up there. There he is. Lock, lock, lock. There's the tone. Fox 2. Two of them. Right there. Bam. He didn't even see it coming. Splash 1. Hell of a fight. Hell of a fight. Uh, much better performance out of the AMRAMs. Um, definitely got me going a little bit there. Very scary. They're performing better. We'll have a look at attack view. Alright guys, so here we go. This is our video. Um, if you don't see the JF-17 on your TAC view, um, it's because you need to upgrade to the TAC view beta 1.8.2 uh, and then you'll be able to see it. And also let me know what you think of the, the background textures here. We usually have a lighter color. If you guys like the darker color, we can stick with that. If you like lighter, we can go with that. Really doesn't matter to me. Um, just let me know what you like. So, um, in this video, the important thing to note here is that I believe the SD-10 has received a slight nerf and its um, drag indexes are slightly higher, so it's a little bit slower. And the AMRAM today received a buff and it's displaying ranges about 10 to 20% more than it did in the past. And I believe a month from now, they may uh, put out some new guidance for it. So it might become a significantly better missile and I really hope they do that because the AMRAM needs some love. It is terrible. It was terrible. Um, it's performing a lot better now. I've actually looked through this tag view once already and very interesting behavior from the AMRAM. Much better. Um, so here we are. We're climbing. He's climbing. Um, he is sitting at uh, 39,000 feet here and we'll switch back to me and go to him and so we're at 50 nautical miles and we'll go ahead and fast forward just a little bit you can see him do a really aggressive climb here he's going to climb right up to 50,000 feet and because he's at f15 with a very nice thrust to weight ratio he can do that i can't um, i got a nice steady climb going on and so i'm climbing through uh, 48,000 feet he just got up to 52 and he fired his amram okay his amram was fired at me from a range of 34 nautical miles, which is significantly more than I'm used to an AMRAM being fired at me. Okay, now I'm aware of this, so I defend the AMRAM a little bit more aggressively. And I fire my missile at 32 nautical miles, and so mine's off. And I pitch my nose up about 15 degrees and fire the missile, and that causes the missile to loft itself. You can see the missile here climbing through 53 or 54,000 feet here and I'm gonna immediately dive as well and so is he and so let's just have a look at the missile speeds here um, his missile is sitting at Mach 3 and my missile is sitting at Mach 4.6 also notice the fact that my missile has climbed significantly higher and is inside a thinner air than his so you're gonna see different Mach numbers and so you can see my missiles really coming in nicely here lots of energy Mach 4 and his AMRAM is Mach 2.7 so not a crazy matchup the the SD10 still appears to be 
uh, kinematically superior to the AMRAM. However, you have to consider things like countermeasure resistance and uh, the AMRAM's ability to, like the notch window for the AMRAM is very small. So it, up close, the AMRAM is much more uh, deadly than the SD10 is going to be. And so you can see uh, Angry Owl here, he's doing a very aggressive dive and actually going cold on the missile in order to survive. I've come in and at about um, where 16,000 feet here, I'm going to fire a second missile at him. And then I'm going to defend. This is normally how I would defend an AMRAM. I would drop my altitude, but I would try to stay nose hot. And so here, I start to defend a little bit more aggressively than I usually would. You can see this AMRAM still coming in at about Mach 0 0.9. Still pretty dangerous if I was a little bit higher up. Uh, but it's going to be a no factor. And so I'm going to be able to turn back in and try to recommit onto the target here. We're at a separation of 17 nautical miles. He is also nose hot on me. Let's watch these incoming SD10s. My SD10 flies past him at Mach 0 0.85. Let's see just where it was when it was defeated. Mach 0 0.9. So actually not a terrible difference, right? Like look, Mach 0 0.84 and it was fired a few seconds before mine, right? And through denser air and it's sitting at Mach 0 0.8. Whereas the SD10, which lofted itself very high and was fired a few seconds later, is sitting at Mach 0 0.86. So not at all a significant difference between the two missiles. So that's interesting. The AMRAM has definitely been upgraded a little bit here. So this is the second missile coming in at him, coming in at Mach 1.2. You can see that the speed is much lower. This is because we're in much denser air. And also Mach is a function of altitude and temperature and all that stuff. So the higher you are, the higher the Mach number. Okay, it's uh, based on local speed of sound. So that missile is easily defeated by simply cranking away at 17 nautical miles. He fires an AMRAM, it's coming in nicely at Mach 1.9. I'm gonna turn away from it, going cold against the AMRAM at this distance is one of the better ways to defeat it. I fire a third missile at him just to keep him defensive while I defend this incoming AMRAM. And it comes very close to hitting him. It tracks him perfectly right up until the end here, and then it does something stupid. I'm not really sure why it didn't just continue to track him. It seems like the missile goes stupid or something. This could be another DCS bug where he actually entered the notch right here. So the missile's actually stupid, but the bug continues to show the missile tracking. So that could be what's happening there. But anyway, he survives that third missile launch. However, at this point, he's fairly defensive, and I am recommitting. I've pulled my altitude up a little bit. That AMRAM is not able to follow up. And so because I'm higher, he's probably scanning kind of low for me. He doesn't see me coming in. I see a very small speck off in the distance, and I kind of zero in on him. I put it on vertical, and I go to... Um, sidewinders or not sidewinders what are they called PL5s for the JF-17 and I just couldn't get a solution or a lock on him I think it was because of the aspect because his nose hot didn't really have anything to look at that's my guess as to why I couldn't get a lock there could still be some bugs with the JF-17 and so there he goes he's gonna we're gonna merge together he knows he's merged he saw us merge but he loses visual I immediately drop my altitude down as I see him go up, right? Because he's gonna have to look down onto terrain and that's gonna make it very difficult for him to spot me. Whereas when I drop my altitude and he climbs, he makes the mistake of climbing, he becomes very visible to me because he's just a little black speck across blue sky, right? So he makes this mistake and he tries to turn with me, no idea where I am. And he's clearly visual, uh, visible to me and I'm gonna get two PL5s off at him. And look at the speeds on this thing. Mach 1.5, 1.6, 1.2. We're up to Mach 2 here, 2.2. Impact of Mach 2.4. He doesn't even see it coming, so no flares. Dead. 
So, interesting fight. Better performance from the Amram for sure. Um, did a much better job of putting me defensive. It definitely was not an easy fight for me. Um, I did find myself having to just throw missiles at him to keep him defensive until I could get close enough. And then once we got close enough, there was a little bit of a luck factor there, right? Because when I came in on him like this, he didn't shoot at me because he was looking, his, he just wasn't looking in the right place in the sky. So he didn't see me. If he had seen me and fired an Amram, I probably would have been dead. And one of the disadvantages of the JF-17 is the very small, narrow radar uh, cross-section that he can see. It sees a very small slice of the sky relative to the F-15, F-18, F-16. So this is one of the advantages you can use against it. I was actually having a lot of trouble uh, locking him up again in certain situations, making me nervous. So, you know, the JF-17 is definitely not as strong as it was when we did the last video. Uh, the NATO aircraft with the AMRAMs can put up a much better fight. As long as they can get just a little bit closer with those AMRAMs, it's not even that hard. Um, they can definitely put up a good fight. So, interesting stuff. Really happy to see the AMRAM getting a bit of a buff. I really think it needed it. Uh, probably even a little bit more. I still see better SD-10 performance and the AIM-120 Charlie should be performing better than the SD-10, uh, even if it's narrowly, but that is, it is what it is. All right, guys, so uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, don't forget to vote. Uh, helps me out a lot when you do that. So big thanks to everybody who's already done that. If you haven't, definitely check out the link and uh, vote. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye, guys.